What's up guys, Shane here from Fugadec 3D Printing and today I'm going to give you my final review of the ANET ET4. Welcome back guys. So yes, the ANET ET4, finally do my review of it because I am a slacker. But yeah, this was quite the saga of a printer to use. and. It, the TLDR is a big letdown from ANET after having such huge success, at least to me, for the ANET A8 Plus, which is just a phenomenal machine and has since then become Ultra Magnus, a very sweet custom build upgrade, or I guess custom upgrade to the ANET A8 Plus, which I highly think you guys should check out. But the ANET ET4 really, really does fall short. There's a lot of things going for it, but the way that it was implemented by ANET is just super subpar. Let's get the specs out of the way first. It's 235 by 235 by 250 on the Z. It sports a 0.4 millimeter nozzle as kind of the standard. It has the little crummy 4010 blower fan on the side, which is the same thing like Creality uses on all of their machines. Uh, it has a very crowdy esque hot end. It's a little bit different than what theirs. It's a little bit shorter of an actual uh, heat sink to it, but very much the same. It is a Bowden printer. This does come with a filament runout sensor. Great. Does come with power recovery. Great. That's about it. It's another single Z roller wheel i3 style 3D printer. There really is nothing unique happening here, except maybe the bottom chassis if that really appeases you. Uh, so kind of like the Mingda D2, how it has the angled touch screen. It does run a proprietary, some type of Marlin slash Repetier type firmware on it. Uh, it does have cooling. Uh, it does not have silent step drivers in it. They do have a auto bed leveling probe on here. It's about an eight or 10, I'd say about a 10 millimeter uh, proximity probe so you do it will detect the glass or the, the build tack surface on here so I lack of words there uh, it's not inductive so pretty much anything you put on here aside from clear glass it should be able to detect uh, it does have a belt driven uh, with a very unique way of running the the Y actually so you can tension it kind of on the side I do like that it makes it easy to do so again fully enclosed if you like that thing it's ventilated non-silent step drivers. I mean, it wasn't, if you can't tell, I was never a huge fan of this machine. I had very, very high expectations for it and very high, I should say, I had high hopes for it just because of coming off such success from the, the A Plus. But we fell short. And where do we fall short at? Well, for firstly, it's the firmware. It runs this odd Marlin slash Repetier somehow, some kind of firmware on it that it doesn't take standard g-code like it takes some of it but not all of it it doesn't hold anything like there is eprom but like you can't level the bed before you actually do the print because g29 doesn't always work you actually have to level the bed in the lcd and then save it and then hope that whatever your slicer settings are don't override the mesh i never could get this to actually level the bed and then print when it was in its stock form. It's not stock anymore, but when it was in a stock form, that would not happen at all. But I was able to get successful prints off of it. So I had the little uh, sample that came with it was longer than expected. I was able to get a little Benchy out of that, and I was able to get the little dog, but this is where the filament ran out. And funny enough, the filament sensor didn't work. Who'd have thunk? So yeah, that didn't really work at all. But hey, they are you know, good looking prints. Can't really argue with that. So I said, let's step it up a notch and let's try the Maker's Muse style torture test. This is an Angus's this is one on, this is the free one on Thingiverse. Uh, and this is multicolor because I used my super duper cheap roll of PLA that I made with the Palette 2S Pro of all the different PLA, you know, runoffs that I had left over. I spliced them all together with that and re-spooled them. So that's what made this. And the results aren't horrible for a machine like this uh yeah the layers are not terribly consistent there is not a lot of stringing a retraction you know well enough dialed in but you can definitely see where there's issues with cooling couldn't cool fast enough or traction just wasn't actually perfect i got really close on it but overall it was successful which honestly is saying a lot that this bowden printer can print a, a torture test like this that's great so i said well let's do something more simple 
a simple vase came out perfect. Honestly, if you have a printer that can't print a vase, there's a bigger problem there. And then I went ahead and did this little, um, what was this guy? This is a little piggy bank mini one. I forget where I got this off of, but I had this little mini piggy bank and great. So it worked, it looks good, it can print. But all of my issues were with the bed, trying to level it. I, was, I dug in a few times here. Uh, I just could not always get the level. I actually had, the, because the level didn't actually happen, I actually drove the, the nozzle into the bed a few times because it didn't actually take the bed level or it just changed and like got real low all of a sudden and scraped in. I don't know what was going on with it. So finally, I kind of had enough and Tim from TH3D let me know that, hey, there's Marlin firmware out there for this, but you need to get this little ST-Link USB adapter in order to be able to load Marlin on this machine. So I went ahead and did that, and I did that on a live stream. So I'm not gonna kind of go over that details there, but you can check it out on my live stream how I did that, and I'll put the resource links down below for the firmware. And ended up using a mix of someone else's plus my own firmware in order to actually get this thing working. So now it's running uh, Marlin 2.0, right around the 2.05 bug fix, I think is what this is on. Um, and it works. Bed leveling works. Um, all the standard codes, fluent runout sensor works. I did lose the power zoom capability, but other than that, it prints, it works well. And I have some other prints here to show that, like a Benchy that came out, honestly, not bad. A little stringy, but uh, not bad at all. I did a, a simple test of the cooling. So this is a bridging test. Everything up to 50 degrees was acceptable. After 50, it really started to lose itself, and then pretty much 65 and 70 were not usable at all. Also had a lot of um, curling up on that. For the bridging, I mean, one inch was fine, one and a half and two were okay, you know, but again, we're, we're talking about a little 4010 fan that barely pushes any air at all, so it's almost like having no cooling. If you were to upgrade this to like a 4020 blower or a 5015 fan, greatly different results, but, it's not really worth my time to do that on this machine. I also ran a few uh, stringing tests to finally make sure everything was dialed in. No issues with that at all. I also reprinted the little dog model and this is the Uncle Jesse's slime green or some type of green glittery filament from them. And he turned out honestly pretty perfect. Like it's definitely a 0.15 millimeter layer height because the details are so fine and they really like to do that. I normally print at 0.2 but overall uh, it was a great print the first layer not fantastic but i mean i kind of was getting there it's still having a little bit of issues dialing that perfectly in but um actually wait no this prints on a raft doesn't it yeah this printed on a raft that's why the bottom looks so funky i forgot about that um but yeah because the other bottom layers of the benchy were perfectly fine so yeah prints on a raft either way and then I went ahead and printed out the Maker Muse torture test. And I don't know if I'm having issues with this model in Precisor, but ever since I switched from Simplify 3 to Precisor, I can't get this model to print right at all anymore. I can never get any printer past a 0.4. Um, I mean, this is the same on the TiVos, even some of my own builds, they're getting stuck at 0.4 and I know they can do it, but for some reason, this model, this Maker Muse tolerance test, is not working at Proof Slicer. Uh, I tried tweeting out to Angus about it. He never replied, of course. So if you guys have any ideas why the torture test, the, the tolerance test, is not working in Proof Slicer, please let me know because something that Proof Slicer is doing is making it weird. It looks fine in the preview and I can see the separation, but everything is completely bound. Uh, I went ahead and took a piece of uh, some pliers to this point four to pull it and I could not get it at all. And it, I mean, it looks fused in there. I don't know where it is, but five is super loose. Point four, I should be able to get down honestly all the way because even the middle one here is fused on this mo for this printer at least. And many others, the middle has been free, but nothing else. So either way, uh, that, this is definitely a settings thing, but I was not able to get past 0.5 with Proof Slicer and this machine. You know, so where does the ANA ET4 stand? Um, honestly, it's a pass, it's a big pass. I really wish that this would have been, you know, something better that ANA was on the, you know, on the upswing and that they were gonna be putting out better products that they put more thought into. It's not as bad as the Mingda, or Mingda D2, whatever the heck it was called. It's not as bad as that. 
but it's not much better. You know, having the ABL on here, great. Having their own goofy firmware on here, not great. What are you guys thinking? Like, I just don't get it. Throwing Marlin on here would be so much easier. It's free, it's open source, and you can just throw the source code on the SD card for everybody. I don't get it at all. <sighs> Rant over. But yeah, again, this is nothing new. This is the standard, if cheap, entry-level printer that you're looking for. It's V-slot extrusion with wheels, a single lead screw, which is gonna lead to slop on your far end. On these, on these smaller printers, not as much. Like this one, I have pretty tight. There's not a lot of slop to it, but you can have slop. Uh, I'm not also happy with how the belt is aligned, how it goes in and out of the V-groove. They didn't really align the carriage that much probably because now that's on the far end, this belt here is rubbing on this end of the extrusion and probably vice versa. So there could have been a little bit more thought going into it, but this is just, another race to the bottom for how cheap someone can make a 3D printer and a copy everyone else's design. I mean, this is effectively another Ender 3 with a case on the bottom of it. And I hate to give the Ender 3 the credit of being the form factor, but uh, it was kind of the first one that really broke through as the cheap, affordable i3 style single lead screw printer. And if you're looking for something to get started on, sure, pick that up. I definitely, definitely would not pick this thing up as a beginner because it is nowhere near ready. Anyone who actually made it further than I did and had more successful prints in the beginning, you're a prodigy. Because I struggled with this for so long on their goofy firmware until I finally put Marlin on it. And now it is an effective printer. It prints decently well now, but all of the headache of having to buy the ST-Link because you can't, can, you can't actually write to their board without this USB controller thing that you need. I don't even know what it does. I just know you need it. And you have to use some weird software to get it on there too. Like you can't just upload it from IDE or VS Code or copy on a firmware bat file. Uh, there are ways to do that, but they're very codey. And you have to kind of be able to find the GitHub to be able to do that. Um, Keith actually was the one, he built some type of a special firmware for this that runs on the side and you throw your firmware bin in there and then it flashes to it and makes it work. But again, it was very Cody and I could not get that one to work out for me. So again, this is definitely a pass and I do hope that Anet really takes a hard look in the mirror with this machine and where they're going. This is not where you wanna go. Do not be Creality, do not try to beat Creality. They are the largest manufacturer of the cheap 3D printer. By far, no questions asked. They have the niche for that. But you have features here that will just dominate the Ender 3, that marketplace, that $170 to $220 marketplace. If you could just solve a few issues with this machine, this could be the new entry level printer. Having a filament run out and having auto bed leveling is the future. And this is, again, this is proximity. This is not inductive. You don't have to have a metal build plate. There's definitely, definitely room for improving this machine. I hope they really listen to it. And if you do want a tinker machine, maybe this is something you want, convert it to a switch wire maybe. Uh, that could be something that I do with it. But by and all, this is a pass. So if that wasn't too down and dreary, again, I hope to have some more better machines to be able to play with, or I'll just keep making my own because those are so much better than what's currently coming off the market. Yeah, they cost more, but you gotta start somewhere. Just don't start here. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this review. If you guys wanna leave any comments down below, if you have this machine or you've dealt with the issues of it, the firmware, anything like that, leave some comments down below. Let me know how you dealt with them and if you're even still using this machine. If you guys wanna support the channel, best thing you can do, subscribe. Hit that bell icon, that way you get notifications when I upload new content or do any of my live streams. If you guys wanna support the channel financially, you can do that via Patreon down below. There's some one-time donation links and there's also a lot of fill links. Update your bookmarks with those and a little bit of what you buy comes back here and help me at the channel. Helps me build the things, help me buy the things for you guys to watch. So thank you all for tuning in. Hope you have a good night. Happy printing.